Since very ancient times, people have been interested in what made up the building blocks of the universe. And in the ancient, in the days of the ancient Greeks, there were uh, ancient Greek philosophers such as Plato, which I have a picture of. This is this guy here is Plato. This is like a you know a portrait a representation of Plato. And at that time, they thought that. They had this idea that the, the the elements which existed at that time, the the different the, the 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 four components which made up everything, was air, which I have here, air, water, fire, and earth. And you might recognize this picture from the Avatar, uh, where we have the you know the four kingdoms the elements, but yeah. And this concept was based on what they could see at that time. They didn't have microscopes and they didn't have like, they didn't have that much, um, that much technology in terms of the kind of technology we have nowadays. And so this is what they came up with. Now, the four elements they came up with can be compared to the four states of matter if you wanted to look at it in that way. Like air can be compared to, um, the gas state of matter gas and water can be compared to the liquid state of matter and um, earth can be compared to solid and fire is a bit of a strange one uh, thinking about the states of matter which we usually look at in like maybe a level GCSE science we don't actually look, really look at the state that fire could be comparable but the, the state which fire is comparable to is plasma Plasma. You might have a, had a look at it if you do like maybe A2 physics. And um, plasma is a state of matter which is basically it's basically when um, substances turn into a sort of of gaseous soup, and that soup consists of um, protons. I'm mean, not protons, but nucleuses of of um, atoms and electrons. Basically, they're not connected to each other, but they just move around and stuff. Like like. Plasma is one of the states of matter which we can find if we take a look inside the sun uh, where fusion fusion reactions happen, but I won't go into that kind of stuff uh, But yeah, so these four different states of matter can be compared to the four elements which they thought existed at that time And now if I go on and in, 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 in more recent times like 200 years ago in the time of this guy whose name was Johann Doberaner and this guy was a German chemist and he studied the elements at this time more at much more much more elements had been discovered um, uh, an advancement from this this basic sort of basic representation this basic um, perspective this basic perception of the elements so we have I have here a table of elements and at this time uh, one of the advancements they had is that they could re measure the relative uh, atomic mass of different elements. And I think at that time what they called it was atomic weight. Well, nowadays we call it relative atomic mass. Or atomic atomic mass. And this guy was around at a time like 1817. So that's like just like under maybe 200 years ago. And... Um, what he did is he got the elements which which they knew at that time and he got some of them and he noticed that there were groups of three he found groups of three in terms of these elements so group three groups of three elements and here I've got a couple of these element groups so I've got lithium sodium potassium calcium strontium barium and so on and what he did is he grouped them in terms of their similarities so what he noticed was that these elements were similar so if you look at the first line, for example, lithium, sodium, potassium, and I've got a modern periodic table up here, which I, you know, used in my previous videos, uh, this one. And if we look at the top right, we can see that all of these three elements, which are in that first triad I wrote, I showed you there, um, we've got them here in the, in the same group in the periodic table, with they're all in group one. And so obviously they've got similar properties and he noticed this he picked up on this and so he said um you know what, i'm not going to do this in a german accent but he said the mean of the many properties of the two elements on either side of the middle element is practically equal value 
of the respective property of the middle element in these triads and well in English what that means is if you look at the elements in this in let's say this first triad for example basically if you take a look at some of the properties of these elements so if you take if you were to take a look at the properties of this element here on the on the left and this property this element the properties of this element here on the right and you were to take a mean so if i was to take a mean of these two properties here i've got the atomic mass which is one of the properties so if i was to, to find a mean when what the way you find a mean is by adding them together and divided by two so 6.9 plus 39.1 and if i divide that by two um i get 23 and you've probably noticed that 23 is the atomic mass of sodium which we have here and he picked up on this if you were to, div to, to look at some of the properties and divide it by two find a mean of it uh, you'd find that the middle element in these triads that he found have very very similar values to the values found from just finding the mean of those two elements and so as you can see if you look here at bromine we found that the uh, predicted atomic mass from the mean is very 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 close to the the actual atomic mass which is the above value and that basically carry, carries on through the, the triads and it happens for some of the other properties of these elements and so he picked up on this and this was a, a, a good step forward in the direction of the modern periodic table now because we're seeing some some similarities so okay now let's 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 go on to uh, slightly further in history say like maybe around 45 years further and and we come to this English uh, chemist and his name was John Newlands and he basically picked up on the fact that if you were to take a look at the elements in order of their relative atomic masses relative atomic masses or, or or you know atomic weight atomic i mean atomic mass just atomic mass as we have here and um, if we were to order the elements in terms of that and i've got a a bit of an extract of what what this would look like from i've got from lithium to, to chlorine and you probably notice that there's something missing here we've got the noble gases which are missing in what would probably be here if we had the noble gases would, would be neon and argon neon and argon but the problem is at this time they did not know um that noble gases existed because i think one of the reasons was that noble gases are so unreactive it's hard to detect their presence so no they didn't know that these existed at that time but what they did know was that lithium beryllium um boron and all of these elements existed and this is just some of the elements they knew existed and um what he did is he ordered them in order of atomic mass so lithium if we go to our, our um, modern periodic table you know lithium is before all of these and this is an order of atomic mass and what he found was that if you actually looked at the pattern if you were to order these every eighth element was similar to the first one so if we go from here this being one right so one two three four five six seven and then eight right sodium we find that sodium is similar to lithium and beryllium if we go from beryllium to all the way to this which is the nine um the ninth one we find that beryllium is the same as magnesium and so on so boron if you go eight so one two three four five six seven eight and aluminum is similar to boron and um and so on and he picked up on this trend and this is very very important thing because he picked up on the fact that between the elements there's not only similarities but there's also a trend and um so this was a, a, a quite a good step forward and he called this whole idea the law of octaves the law of octaves octaves and what the law of octaves was was why i just explained but this is the way he said it like any given element will exhibit analogous behavior to the eighth element following it in the table and this may seem a bit you know um long worded or i don't know what word to use but 
Um, analogous just means that it would be similar. It would exhibit, it would display behaviors which were similar to that of the eighth element following in the table. So anyway, uh, later on, another guy, Dmitry Mendeleev, and there's a lot of other other people who contributed to the development of the periodic table, but I'm going to just go over some of the key figures. Um, actually, before I go into Dmitry Mendeleev, this whole thing about the law of octaves, this guy presented it to the scientific community, and they more or less laughed at him. Uh, they thought it was ridiculous, and they thought that you know how can you how can you go about comparing scientific elements to music? How can you be comparing science with art? Are, are you crazy? Basically, yeah, they they sort of ridiculed him. But a couple of years later, about I think it was maybe around twenty years or so later. He was finally credited with his discovery. They finally thought, you were onto something. So yeah. Now going on to Dmitry Mendeleev, uh, I won't go on to it. I won't go into talking about him in this video. But Dmitry Mendeleev created a a periodic table, one of the first versions, proper versions of a periodic table, which which was very much elaborate, very well thought out. And I, in the next video, I'm going to be going into that. And I'm also going to be talking about some of the reasons why his table really stood out from from the rest. So yeah, uh, so that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next video. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.